So good morning and welcome. It's good to see all of you. And I welcome you in the name of Christ to worship. There are a lot of announcements. And I'm going to try to go really, really quick. Because some of them will come from me as I stand here. And some of them will be on the screen. And so just please be prepared. Uh, and we'll try to move as fast as we can. Today uh, is our morning worship, obviously. And then I uh, have a service at 2 o'clock at the Woodlands. And I'm filling in there for Paul Rainey. Paul and his wife Karen and family are traveling. I'm going to be very honest with you, and particularly for persons who are in the Pine Tones. Four services is about all I can do. <laughs> Um, and, and you saw last week or a week ago that on the fourth service, I'm not always there mentally. Um, and so please accept my apologies. I wish you a great concert. I know you will sound outstanding, uh, but I've committed to the Woodlands, and I think that's a commitment to the ministry and life of this church that's very important. So I wish you well. Three o'clock today, $20 per ticket. Please come and hear them. And there's a whole bunch of church members in Pine Tones. So if you're in Pine Tones, just raise your hand. So half the congregation is in Pine Tones. And so we, we do celebrate your ministry. We celebrate your singing. And it's songs of the 60s, right? Yes, it is. Ones that were before my time. And so, so well, please come today. Um, I have to tell you a little bit about Molly. <coughs> Molly had promised to help me at Woodlands. And she really, really wrestled with what she wanted to do. Because she wanted to go to the concert. So I told her to go ahead and go and enjoy. And I hope you do, Molly. Um, and I will say that because if someone is free at 2 o'clock this afternoon, and what would not mind being with me for an hour at Midlands, I would really appreciate your help. Uh, today, and please do a covenant. That being said, this week on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is annual conference. And I will be in Princess Anne along with Gail and along with uh, Emily Neville, and we are your delegates to the annual conference. Friends, I'm going to work Monday morning, and then I'm going to take the rest of Monday off, and then I'll be back in the office Tuesday and Wednesday. If you need me, please call me on my cell. It is perfectly fine to text or call me during annual conference on my cell, particularly if you have an emergency. It's very important your emergency, so please do so. Also, I want you to know that we now, according to law, have 62 persons signed up for the Shorebirds game. Um, and if you want to sign up, the time is close at hand. I'm going to try next week to call the shorebirds and talk to the representative. So please know that there is an opportunity left, uh, and I encourage you to sign up. The details will be forthcoming. Um, part of it is based on how many people we have, and we do not have a 62 passenger bus. So it may mean that some people drive, and, and we'll do the very best to keep everybody connected. Today is Trinity Sunday. It is also Holy Communion. And I know most everyone here, but I do want to gently remind you that in the United Methodist Church, we offer open communion. It's one of the reasons I'm a United Methodist. And that means that everybody is welcome. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to you know, be a member of the denomination or the church. You are just simply welcome because you are made in God's name and a daughter or son of God. So please let me invite you to participate fully. And I want to move on then to a couple of announcements on the screen. So are you guys ready back there? Okay, Austin, I'd like to do the Nook announcement first. We determined that each month during the summer we would celebrate a specific ministry and mission of the church that's very important. <coughs> And one of those is the Nook. And we're going to move on through the summer, lifting up a different ministry each month. And the Nook is very important to us 
in terms of ministry and mission to people, but also in terms of funding the church budget. Now, I'm not positive, and if you're on finance, you can correct me. Mary's here, and Terry's here, and some others. I think that the note brought in profit was $249,000 or so last year. And that's a staggering amount for sales of four or three or two or one dollar at a time. And, you know, it's, it's important because that money helps fund the church budget. We have basically a three-legged stool. Uh, Milk and other ministries like that, uh, little lambs and congregational giving. So this is a very important piece. How many of you have know what the milk is? How many of you have been to the milk? How many of you volunteer at the milk? How many of you are tired of raising your hand? Uh, so, so if you have not been, please go and visit. If you'd like the chance to try and see if you'd like to volunteer, you can volunteer and find out whether you like it or don't like it. It's an important part of this church, and the clothes are really good. I know you used to have a fashion show meeting about with the clothes from the milk before. So here is Sam and another volunteer uh, from the milk, and I ask you to watch, even though I still hate pictures of myself. Good morning. Each month during the summer, we are going to celebrate one important mission ministry of the church. This first mission ministry that we will celebrate in June is the Nook. The Nook is a very important ministry of the church, and it serves the community well. And we're excited to welcome two persons from the Nook and invite them to tell you just a little bit about what they do. So each week, there'll be something happening in worship during the week at the building. You can come and be a part of celebrating and thanking the staff and volunteers of this important ministry of the church. Sam is here. She is our director and leader at the NOF. And one of the things that she will do is invite you to an open house at the NOF so that you can come and walk through and see what happens. But if you were to schedule times with Sam, she also can introduce you to the ministry, the mission that the milk fulfills. I'm going to step out and let these two wonderful ladies tell you about all that they do. May God bless you. May God bless the ministry of the milk. Hi, I'm Sam, and I'm the manager over at the milk. And I love working with all my volunteers. Hi, I'm Judy, and I enjoy volunteering at the milk. Volunteering brings me us joy and gets us to the opportunity to meet more people in our community. We help clothe and feed men, women, and children during these trying times. We recently had a customer who was overjoyed with our dollar rack, and she said everyone is able to find something they can afford, and we add new stock daily. We hope you stop by and check it out. Also, we need new volunteers, young or old, or students that need their community service hours. So real quick, here's the other video. Um, we are now on our third or fourth director of position. And our last year, here, last year or so. Um, the new director is a young lady named Jessie Mayette. Jessie lives in Pueblo City, um, and she has been an employee of this church for 18 years. Um, she is doing an outstanding job, and I invite you and encourage you to be aware of that the Little Lambs ministry you know, connects us to the community. We see lots of parents and lots of kids. Uh, very soon we'll be starting a summer camp, and Jessie was going to be here in person to greet you. She has four children, and, and we were talking about grandchildren before, which I still have none of, and sometimes those little children bring things home that parents don't want. So she's homesick, and she's here this way for us, and I'll, she'll come in another time and read them. But if you'll go ahead with Jesse. Good morning, all. It is my privilege to introduce to you the new director of the Little Lambs Learning Center, Jesse Bayette. Jesse is an important part of the team that guides and directs the ministry of Little Lambs Learning Center. 
She comes to us having been a longtime employee here in Little Lambs, and we are thrilled to have her. Jesse, say just a few words about who you are so that everybody can get to know you. And then please, as you have occasion, stop by and visit Little Lambs, maybe schedule a time to read with the children, and just get to meet Jesse and welcome her to this new position, which she's doing a great job at. Good morning, everyone. Um, I wanted to introduce myself through this video. Um, I'm the new director here at Little Limbs Learning Center. Um, as we said, my name is Jessie Mayette. I've been employed with the Phoenix Church for about 18 years. Um, I'm excited to start this new role. I live in Pokemon with my four children who were blessed to come here at Little Limbs. Um, I'm grateful for this opportunity and excited to see where the new adventure takes us for Little Lambs and the Community Church Motion Times. Thank you. Yes, and me too. <laughs> so welcome, Jesse, and thank you for filling this important role. And uh, we want to take just a moment and pray for Jesse as she had a new journey of spring. Gracious and loving God, we pray for Jesse and for all the staff at Little Lambs Learning Center. Bless and keep them. May your spirit of patience and love, kindness and gentleness with these children and with one another rest and abide upon them all. In Christ's name, amen.
shared in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. This morning, you will note in your bulletin a prayer of confession. In other churches that I've served, when we had the sacrament of the Holy Communion, there was always the opportunity for us to confess our sins before God and to be forgiven. This summer, on Sundays when we have the sacrament, I'd like to include a prayer of confession. Now, I do covet your opinions on this prayer. Not to say this prayer is part of the service. But here's the thing. Please don't tell one another. It doesn't help me to know what you'd like to do. Please speak directly to me and let me know what you think. So let us participate in this prayer of confession as is found in the bulletin this morning. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Bring us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I invite you to enter into a time of silence.
hear the reading for today. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And they saw him, they worshipped him, but they doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am always with you to the end of the age. This is the word of the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my rock and my redeemer. Two things. Uh, first of all, choir, I was trying to think of a good word to describe the outstanding anthem. And Sally, I came up with the word haunting. That sounds not in a bad way, but but in a very good way. And I've heard that him over and over in many arrangements, and you guys did a great job with that. But I think Lynn's work was even better, and that was wild. <laughs> so that's the better word. So Lynn, we're going over your word. And secondly, just a gentle reminder that um, during, it's been the tradition of this church, during the time from Sunday after Memorial Day to Labor Day, that the pastor does not wear a robe. I feel slightly underdressed. I'm used to wearing a robe. I like wearing my robe. But I will be very honest. Right now, my robes are on the back seat of my car because they need to be washed. So be thankful for the robe at this point in time. Today is Trinity Sunday. And Trinity Sunday is a Sunday in the church calendar where we pause for a moment and we shift the focus from ourselves and shift it to the greatness, the awesomeness of God. Our focus is on how God expresses God's self as one God in three persons. Early in ministry, I didn't have many people ask me anything about the Trinity. It just was an assumption, and it seemed that we just moved on from there. It's been interesting, over the last ten years, I've had lots and lots of questions about the Trinity. It is a really difficult doctrine to understand and to enunciate. So I know that I will stumble through it this morning, but I will do my best quickly to talk for a few moments about the Trinity. And, and I picked this passage, and it actually came down to the choice between two passages of the New Testament in which God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were all present. We see that this here in the, the statement, go therefore make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The other passage that I looked very seriously at was the one when Jesus is baptized, and you all know this one as much as I do, that God's voice comes from heaven. This is my beloved Son, or the place says, in whom I am well pleased, the gospel says, listen to him. And then you have the Spirit descending upon Jesus as in the form of a dove. And then you, of course, have Jesus there to be baptized in the Jordan River. Trinity Sunday, again, helps us to understand and to experience one God in three persons. Let's take just a moment to talk about those three persons. God as Father. God as creator. We think of this God as the great, big, awesome, majestic, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present God. God in God's greatest and biggest form. We see God displayed throughout Scripture in this way, and particularly in creation stories, and in <clears throat> stories perhaps when there is great activity in nature, not just creation, but also in, in the end of the Bible in the book of Revelation. 
This is God where God's power is expressed. And it's also sometimes a troubling God. Why did this disaster, this hurricane, this tornado hit here, but not here? Sometimes we have a difficult time relating to this God because this God seems so very different from us. But it's certainly a part of the Trinity, a part of the Godhead, and this is God in God's greatest, most powerful, most omnipotent, and the second part of the Godhead of, Tr of the Trinity is Jesus. Now, Jesus and God are one. They're not two separate persons. They're one person, but two different expressions of the same reality of God. And we relate very well to Jesus, don't we? We read the stories in the Gospels. We feel that Jesus is with us every day. We try to use Jesus as our example. Um, and we just, we just love Jesus. When we think of Jesus going to the cross and dying for us, his sacrificial love and example for us. Jesus is someone that we feel very close to. And then there is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, it used to be called a lot. Um, I prefer the term spirit personally. Um, I think of a ghost, I kind of think of Casper. Um, but seriously, what is the role of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life today? I have three or four things. Let me just maybe stay with three. Its primary role, one of its first roles, is to convict us of sin. We all sin. We all, as Paul wrote, have fallen short of the glory of and it is the good work of Christ, the good work of God, to offer us forgiveness and new life and redemption despite our sin. We don't make it into heaven, if that's what our goal is, based on our own merit, our own goodness, our own value. Instead, we do so on what Christ has already done for us. So the Spirit reminds us that we're not perfect, that we sin. We all stand in need of the grace of God. The Spirit comforts us. If you ever in a time of great heartache and pain or the loss of a loved one or something bad that's happened, cry out to God for comfort. It's the Spirit that comes and brings to us comfort. who says, I feel your pain. I understand your hurt. And in the face of all of that, I am with you and I love you. The Spirit also uh, helps us to be called and challenged to do something great for God. United Methodists believe that everyone has a call on their life. Not just clergy, not just choir but everyone. And that call is expressed in different ways and forms. I mean, we talked about a little bit about this last week. It helps us to hear God's call on our lives and to serve and love in the name of Christ in very important ways. So the Holy Spirit is very active in the life of the believer. There are many, many other ways. We could talk about several different ways. And I think sometimes we feel uncomfortable with the Spirit because of some of the excesses of other denominations and places. And we feel that perhaps it's not warm and friendly, warm and fuzzy like Jesus. So all three of these expressions of God are one. They're not separate. God is God. Jesus is God. The Spirit is God. They are all one God, different expressions. You might ask, how can that be? So really quickly, let me give you one example. Now, I was never great in science. <coughs> and I took only the minimum of science classes in college that I needed to graduate. But I do know this. 
that the chemical makeup of water is H2O. We all agree the chemical makeup of water is H2O. So you have water. I have been told by some wonderful friends in the choir that I need to drink more water and less diet. <laughs> and I greatly appreciate their concern for me. And I commit to doing that. I do drink lots of water um, and such. But you also have water. Okay, baby. You have water expressed in another form, right? What happens when you put water in the refrigerator, in the freezer? It becomes what? Ice. Is it still H2O? Yeah. It's still the same reality. It's just a different form of the same reality. One of the things that has happened for me as I've, as I've tried to eat healthier and lose weight is that I've given up a lot of pasta. I love pasta. It's not the sweets that I miss. It's the starches and the salty stuff. So potatoes and pasta are among my favorites. So you put water in a bowl, a pot to cook that, and you have to bring it to a boil. And what happens when you bring more water to a boil? You have steam. Still it's sure. The same different expression same reality. So we see that these three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all God, all one. So when we pray, our prayers, whenever we choose to do something bad or something good, prayers of help or prayers of thanks, prayers of joy. We're not talking to one part, we're talking to God in God's full expression. And one of the things that I think this commends us to do is to be in all the greatness of God. One writer, and I forget who it was, said that we understand, we understand that God can actually be contained in our thing. That God is greater and bigger and more wonderful and more also than we can even imagine. And I think sometimes we get so focused on ourselves and, and, and all of us have important things that are happening in our lives. But our true focus as people of faith has to be on the awesomeness and greatness of God. To me, this great God is even more compelling to go out and tell people, as Matthew 28 talks about, that the God of everything loves us and knows us is always with us, not to condemn us, but to forgive us of our sin and to love us. And that to me, folks, is good news. That the God who made every tree and every mountain and every bird and even the mosquito loves us with a love that can never be made greater because it's the love that is to the fullest extent So this morning we're going to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion, but we're going to take up our offering first. So I'll invite our ushers to please go to their appointed places. And you will notice that the offering prayer is a responsive prayer, so I invite you to pray with me at this time. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer our gifts to God. God is king over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted.
and you and Bennett and others have fixed communion for this service, thank you. As you clean things up, would you keep some of the bread for me so I can use that at the moment's place? So just put it a little back, and I'll take that. Thank you. thank you. And I would invite those who are helping serve the sacrament to please cover this time. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts that in the breaking of this bread, the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world. Redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. <coughs> and let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I'm going to assume that you guys are quiet. The outfits gave them away. Dear friends, the table of Christ is open and you are invited to come. Please come at the direction of your usher and if you would like to kneel in prayer at the altar, that is perfectly well.
쓰레기통 근데 저 컵들 쓰레기통 버리는 거 아니야? 다른 거 먹고 이렇게 버리면 돼, 왜? 나 했어? 나 했어? 
peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us sing together.